a mayor is not a king. We don't elect a mayor, y'all, who then we just let loose and fly on his own. The mayor's power is constrained by operating arrangements that he has with both the controller and with the um, city council. And as in so many instances in the past, because I have to say, this is a chronic problem for our mayor. He continues to flout the requirements of the law. Um, he started his administration, this kind of nonsense, when he decided to unilaterally have the <coughs> building on Park Avenue race, and he continues to do that. Um, and that is what the problem is. It's not the substance of the ideas. The mayor is not allowed to unilaterally undertake actions without the required approval of his counterparts in government, and he continues to do this. And in my judgment, I want to be very clear, in my judgment, the mayor has disqualified himself. The mayor, Mayor Richard Thomas, has repeatedly disqualified himself to serve as the leader, uh, uh, the mayor of the city of Mount Vernon, precisely because he continues to flout the requirements of the law. And in that sense, the mayor's a criminal. The criminal activity that the mayor engages in has to desist. Tell us how you really feel. I'm saying, like, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It's I have a two-part question. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, let me just say, welcome everybody to who's just watching on Facebook. Facebook Live just kicked in. You missed the first seven minutes of the show. We'll try to repeat some of that. Lorraine Lopez is about to address the crowd. Go ahead. I just said you always interrupt me. No, I wonder welcome all the people. I just... Welcome, everybody. Okay, my two-part question is this. Okay, I'm just messing with you. Um, okay, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm Robin to y'all. I was stern. The mayor said he was going to move it over 20 feet. Is that what you had said before, AJ? Something along those lines. I don't want to get the exact. That, it, 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 he wasn't totally eliminating it, though, right? He was going to okay, move it over. But, keep but, it? But, okay, your house... It has a basement. It's in the ground, right? I know, but... I can't go to your house and push your house over I understand that, but what did the mayor said he was going to do? Did he say okay. he was going to keep it, move it over? Um, well, he wants to move it over so he can make room for an eight-lane track. Right now, there's only room for a six-lane track. But the problem is, when you have to look at it, look at a house. You can't push a house over. You have to go in the ground. You I have understand. to move that. You got to reset a new foundation into the ground. The money that that would take, and, and I'm not a contractor, but from what I'm told, it would cost almost more money to do that and then rebuild it than to leave it where it is right okay, now. Okay, so there goes my sec the second part of the question. The second part of the question is, since the tennis court is not part of the resolution or the agreement or anything like that, where was he supposed to get the money to do that? That's a good question for Mayor Thomas or someone from the Thomas administration who is welcome to call in at 718-705-4959 and answer that question. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody who's tuned in right now. We got Floyd Myers. What's up? What's up? Um, what's going Floyd, on, what Floyd? Uh, D. Wilson is in Hi, the D. house. Hi, D. Says, good, morning, good, after, good evening, Dr. Bob, Lorraine, and A.J. Woodson. F Frank Trulio, Jr. Uncle Frank is in the house. Um, Dagmar. Jim, what's his last name? J uh, Dagmar Jimenez. Hey, what's up, Dagmar? There you go. I'm so glad you said the name. Thank <laughs> you. And I, and I apologize for not being able to pronounce the name. But um, what's up? So for everybody, we started the show, but Facebook Live didn't kick in to actually 612, and we were already on for about five minutes. We started giving a breakdown of everything that happened this weekend. And well, since June 1st when the um, – People under the order of Mayor Thomas came in as like these in the night after midnight, <clears throat> um, June first, uh, and dismantled and dis damaged um, the actual bubble over the tennis center. Uh, the Mayor Thomas then had a press conference the next day saying that they owed a half a million dollars um, in back rent, and that's why he did it. Um, but a city hall, and I wrote this in the article on the paper, city hall, a city hall insider said their lease is only somewhere around $50,000 a year. So that means the tennis center would have to have been there over 10 years without paying for it, paying their lease to owe anywhere near $500,000. Wow. And this came from 
a city hall insider who works for Mayor Thomas who wants to remain <laughs> nameless so they can keep their job. But mm-hmm. they said that lease can't be but like 50000 somewhere around that a year. So if they were there for, let's say, two years, we're talking about possibly $100,000 if, if, if that's the case. Um, Mayor Thomas, I'm sorry, Mayor Dave, former Mayor Davis and council member Marcus Griffin both described there was an agreement with the city when Mayor Davis was still mayor that Keela Tennis would be responsible for the interior. The ex, you know, the interior that's the bubble, the tennis courts, and all that kind of stuff. The city was putting the outside wall, this other glass wall, the, the second part, and all this other stuff. Um, and since it was taking a long time to do that, they wrote in some sort of language in the agreement that they would not be required to pay rent until the city fulfilled their part of the obligation of the bargain. Mayor Davis got voted out of office, so he wasn't able to finish it. Mayor Thomas had no intention of doing it, so the work that the city was supposed to have done still has not been done. Okay, so so I don't know if they put the money in escrow or what they did, but they were supposed to. It was supposed to be agreed upon, according to Mayor former Mayor Davis and Council Member Marcus Griffin who were both involved in the negotiation of the deal. So um, they know more about it than I do. Um, but Mayor Thomas is saying, <clears throat> excuse me, that they owe um, uh, a lot of money. But and that's why I did it. But, and, okay, I just want to say one last okay. thing. My problem, and this is the conversation that I've had, and I want to have it on the radio so I can say it so everybody can hear it so I don't have to keep having it individually. Like we stood with OK Freddie when everybody said Freddie was dirty and had a lot of violations and was doing all this illegal activity inside of his establishment. If all of that was true, the way the mayor, the Thomas administration came in, gave them a half an hour to leave and chain, padlocked their front door with no due process, I was never arguing was okay Freddie's innocent or guilt I was arguing about due process so let's say everything they said about okay Freddie is true now the taxpayers of Mount Vernon now have to pay him because his rights were violated and there was no due process going forward same with mega beverage and other businesses going forward if and I talked to Sharifa Khan who was the marshal and she said, and if you watch the video with um, the officer, Lieutenant Marchuli, Mar, M-A-R-C-U-C-I-L-L-I, um, my, who I call the Million Dollar Man, if you watch the video, they asked him, where's the paperwork saying we have to leave? He said, you don't need to see no paperwork, just I got orders to get you out of here. Sharif, Sharifa Khan is the marshal for the city of Mount Vernon. And she told me on Friday that she can't evict somebody or put somebody in. She has to present some sort of paperwork. Right. Like that's part of the process. So there was no due process. No one was taken. They weren't taken to court and, get, and issued a court order, which will go to the marshals or the sheriff's department, where to put them out. No due process was done. Their damage to the work, to, to, to what they had there, you, and they, and you shut down their livelihood. And if they were supposed to be evicted, you didn't go through the process to evict them. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm standing on the side of due process. Due process. And then when you have, when the man looked at me 1 o'clock in the morning after they did this and said, AJ, where do you go when the, when the police department of your city are the ones protecting the ones that are violating you? And I really didn't have an answer for him. I guess no, there, well, there is an a, answer. A, the AG's office, I guess. No, there so, is an answer. He files a complaint with the Mount Vernon Civilian Review Board, and the Civilian Review Board should conduct an investigation CCRB, right. and issue some findings. I did put that at the end of the article. This might be a case for the newly yes, formed CCRB. Yes, this is why yeah. Damon, Brother Jeff, and so many, Brother Edwards, and so many other people um, fought so hard for a couple of years to get the CCRB legislation enacted. So in instances where people have allegations of concern that officers 
have overstepped their authority, they can have a duly authorized board review those allegations and to determine whether there's any substance. And I would urge, Keela, I would actually urge um, the city council persons that were there as well. It might be a little bit of a conflict of interest, but I think someone needs to file a complaint but <coughs> against the civilian, uh, with the Civilian Review Board against those officers. But the mayor said that the reason that they brought it down was because it collapsed due to illegal dumping. It does. Okay, that so was that may be reasoning. well and good. So, so that may be well and good, but there are procedures for the mayor to have his concerns reviewed by his other counterparts in government, and for them to make a collective determination as to whether or not there is, in fact, the emergency that the mayor contends. If you actually look at the city charter, there are provisions that will allow for emergency removal of structures, but there are constraints in the mayor's ability to exercise those powers. Mm -hmm. And this is why the mayor continues to get into trouble. He finds loopholes or tries. No, he just, uh, he has, he doesn't follow the, the, the letter of the law. Um, I mean, we have a charter in place that says you can do this, you do this. And for most situations, there's a process of what you have to do. Um, maybe a particular body has to vote on it, the council, the board of estimates, who, you know, whatever group people have to vote on it for it to, to go and then the mayor has the power to do whatever and us other instances they're going to have to go to court like the like the um like the uh, city council did they got a temporary restraining order to prevent the mayor because see they don't have the power to just say the mayor can't do it they have to go to court they you know and they got the court and a judge ruled a 60-day temporary restraining order, and they will revisit it sometime in July to see if it needs to be permanent. Um, and and uh, Councilman Andre Wallace says in the article to Black Westchester that um, this gives them chance to time. Well, one, it will cost, it will stop the waste of any. Um, hold on on calls. We're not taking. Hold on on calls. Give me a minute for the calls. I'm not taking that call right now. That's the phone? Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, Skype. <laughs> so a representative listen, listen. from the mayor's office. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, yeah. well, well, you're welcome to call back. Give me five minutes. So, so, um, where was it? Oh, so they had to get a temporary restraining order. So it would prevent any more waste of any money possibly and give the, the council a chance to continue the conversation with the county on what's going to go, what's the next step as far as the restoration is and everything, and there's no more damage or anything done. But Ken Jenkins called me and wanted to remind, he said, and he's the one that gave me the figures of the six point something, and uh, if that's somebody for you, tell them to call back if they if they say and they try to call in. The six point something million that the county still pledged and the five million that Pretlow got, and there actually might be some more money somewhere else that's, that they got from somewhere else. But they think they have enough money to do it. But that the it does not include it does not include the um, anything to do with the repairing the the tennis center though. It is for the restoration of Memorial Field. Right. Yeah. I mean, I want to say something and brought into context just a little bit. In all fairness to current Mayor Mayor Thomas, um, my own assessment, and you know, I've as I've kind of followed the news like everyone else to the best of my ability, read the relevant documents that have been issued by newspapers and various government agencies. My own sense is that this is a problem that um, precedes Mayor Thomas by several administrations. I, I, absolutely. I have to say, I mean, I think former Mayor, er, I cannot comment on uh, former Mayor Clinton Young's role in all of this so far as have, I have been able to determine um, Mayor Young followed all of the procedures that were required in order to hammer out the agreement to renovate the field. I have to say, though, Mayor Davis's um, apparent role in the fiasco that now we find in Memorial Field is, you know, n not much better than that of, of his um, predecessor, Mayor Thomas. Well, let, let, me, let me just say, Mayor Davis stepped into office January 1996. Mm -hmm. While he was county legislator and mayor elect, November or December of 1995, the New York Times wrote an article about the decay, the decade of decay of Memorial Field. There was even talks then 
that legislator Davis was trying to work a deal for the county to take over the field. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's the problem. And I'm putting it in layman's terms. Mayor Davis inherited the patient on life support. Mayor Clinton, it, the patient died on Clinton's watch. And Mayor Thomas is struggling to try to revive the, the patient. Um, that's the situation. So this, the, the damage was done well before Richard Thomas was either mayor or council person. Mm-hmm. The damage was in place. A lot of some of the damage was actually in place. The decay and, and lack of maintenance of it precedes actually 1996 when Davis took over because there's a 1995 article about the decades of decay of Memorial Field and the crumbling stands on the visitor side. And it is very descriptive in, the, in language. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I will try to pull that up because I referred to that several times in Black Westerns. I will try to find that article and post it for everybody to see it. So I just wanted to say, for all those that would say, why are we beating up the mayor? Some people even saying, <coughs> well, why are the council trying to stop him from doing good? <coughs> right now, the, I believe that the TRO gives a chance for the council and everyone to have a conversation on what's the best way to proceed. And it won't just be Mayor Tom is doing what he wants to do, regardless. But but let's be clear, because I think this is one of no, the biggest problems that we have in the city of Mount Vernon with respect to policy. The mayor does not unilaterally set the policy. No. In the charter, he any it. kind of government spending by the city has to be approved by the city council. So there's no way that any mayor, whether it's Mayor Davis or Mayor Thomas, should be making plans to <laughs> spend any money of the city of Mount Vernon without building consensus amongst his counterparts in the city council and on the uh, board of estimate. So in my view, actually, the city council has done exactly what they are supposed to do. They are to object when a m- out-of-control mayor decides to usurp the council's authority to allocate the city's monies by just going out and spending it by him or himself. And Mayor Davis made the same mistake. Mayor Davis should not have unilaterally decided to revise the terms of the renovation plan by himself. And in that sense, Mayor Thomas seems to be following the very bad patterns that Mayor Davis and perhaps others even before him have engaged in. You know, and the bullshit has got to stop. It's a lot of nonsense here. I just posted the Times article. It actually is 1994. Mm -hmm. And it describes, this is the New York Times. This is the description. Built in 1930, the stadium is a picture of decay. Weeds and dust choke the playing field. Mm-hmm. Paint flakes from the green railings and the concrete stands on the home team side. The bleachers on the visitor side have been condemned. This was before Astorino even. This was Westchester County Executive Andrew O'Rourke's position. And he had proposed the buying memorial field from the city of Mount Vernon invest, and investing $6.1 million to spruce up the park, converting its seating alignment for baseball and attracting a minor league baseball team. The mayor liked the idea. This is, had to be Blackwood because this was before Davis. Davis got into office January 96. This article is written, um, I have like five screens in front of me, in 1994. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this predates, this even, that just, I just want to point back, 1994, this is what the Times described. And... Since then, nothing has really been done to maintain it and to refurbish it and to the point that Clinton had to physically close it. You you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, under his, as I said, the patient died under Clinton. You know what I mean? So Davis, his whole term had not done 
I mean, obviously hadn't done much to do this. And yes, it says Major, Mayor Blackwood embraced the county's plan, arguing Mount Vernon can't afford the rehabilitation. And that was in 94. You know what I'm saying? Way before, you know, now is what, 20, 24 years ago or something like that? Now you have 24 years of decay on top of that. So now it's at a point where you just kind of need to like <laughs> gut the whole thing like a house and restart the whole thing over again. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't build on top of decay. You know what I mean? You just got to kind of knock it all down. But um, Mayor Thomas, what he did accomplish, Mayor Davis, what he did accomplish is the building of the tennis court, which is what he wanted. Um, and even then, there were a lot of citizens who argued against it because they wanted Memorial Field done. And the only thing that had really looked like it was getting done was the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he kind of left his legacy. The tennis courts are going to be his legacy regardless. Because it's going to cost, again, it would cost too much money, over a million dollars or whatever was spent in there. Now you're going to waste yeah. that money, take more money to knock it down. And what residents, who's going to explain that to the residents? Yeah, my assessment is that one of the big problems is that Mayor Davis decided to shred up the renovation plan that had been legally adopted okay. by his predecessor. Now, he now, cannot do that. I, we, while I always said that. Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins mm -hmm. told me something I did not know before that conversation. Mm -hmm. County Executive Rob Astorino approved Ernie's plans for, for no, no, but what I'm but saying, that's the no, problem, no, 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 that's not how a plan no, is no, approved. No, but I'm Rob Astorino, no, no, has but as far as what, secondary what, role, what, 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 let, let me finish my argument. I have always argued Clinton got the approval of the county, they gave the money. Uh, with Clinton's plan, and when Davis changed it, I always thought that there was never an approval again from the county. You know what I'm saying? Astorino okayed it and was giving the money towards Ernie's plan. You, you understand what I'm saying? Astorino forego with the, the mayor's, the mayor, the, the county's obligation. They were going to support Ernie's plan. Well, you if the mayor's saying? gonna, it's gonna go towards the county executive and say, "Listen, this is what we want to do." He's not going to say no. Well, no, just, no, 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 but, no, no, but no, we're, no, we're talking no, about the nine million dollars. The Clinton got nine million dollars approved, oh. and the argument was always then Ernie Davis changed the plans when he came in office. Until Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins told me yesterday, I never knew Astorino, with the, the agreement, the current agreement, a lot, you know, changed it so Ernie could that they were going to support Ernie's vision and changing it, and still put the money and still the pl rest of the money they were going to invest. They were going to pledge, and that money went into place. The two point almost three million dollars, or three point one million dollars, that was supposed to go for the destruction of the the, the 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 taking down of the stands, the whole stands. What's done now? That was supposed to be done with that early money. So then, what's Latimer's position on this? Latimer wants Latimer, a son of Mount Vernon, wants to build this. He wants it done, and he's they're offering to take it over. With the rest of the six point whatever million dollars they vowed of the nine million dollars uh -huh. and the five million dollars that Pretlow got um, from the state, and they believe that, and this is per Ken Jenkins yesterday's conversation, they believe that there is enough money that they can fully renovate and give Mount Vernon back a working memorial field that can, you know, be flourishing. Okay. I just want to add one more thing. We always talk about in tax increases. In 1994, it says taxpayers observed a 23% property tax increase. We have not seen anything like that lately. In what year? This is 94. So it said last year, so 93. 93, Mount Vernon absorbed a 23% property tax increase. I just want to keep that in. Wow. That's just when people are complaining about the two point something and the one point something. 23% property tax. Wow. That's wow, crazy wow. for the city of Mount Vernon. Okay, you want me to tell what? I'm actually reading the letter that County Executive Latimer forwarded to Mayor Thomas, specifying the conditions under which they will resume okay. financial responsibility. Okay, and Ken spoke about that, so go ahead and bring that yeah, up. Yeah, and I think it's important, you know, maybe just to read a couple of critical lines. Um, and I'm just going to read from the pa uh, second paragraph. Um, this is a letter that's dated May 31st, 2018 from County Executive Latimer to Mayor Richard Thomas. The second paragraph reads as follows. 
Pursuant to Section 2 of the IMA, IMA, the Intermunicipal Agreement, the city was to design and construct the project with no deviation from approved plans without the county's prior written consent. Compliance with the approved plan was deemed, quote, a critical element of this agreement. The city was given 38 months to design, bid out, and construct the project. In 2009 and 2010, the county paid the city a total of $3.4 million um, towards the project. Work on the project stall thereafter. It is my understanding that the city is still holding approximately $700,000 of unspent county funds. Um, the <coughs> county executive goes on to request that the money, um, any further spending of the money be suspended, essentially seems like returned. Um, but the important point is that there was an approved plan that all administrations were obligated to follow, that no one is authorized to change the substance of the plan without adhering to the original agreement, which requires that you get written consent. And the reason that I mention this is because, as so far as I know, you could correct me if you're wrong, maybe you know differently, not even Mayor Davis was able to produce a written approval. He, that Ken Jenkins said Astorito gave him that. Okay, that's, that's what see, I'm saying. That's what that's I'm saying. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. This is a problem in, in just in our discussions. Ken Jenkins can't tell us that Rob Astorino said for approval. We need proof. That's that's the point. There there are procedures that are followed. Okay, so and the so, procedures so, written consent. So, so until so, we have documents that certify that Mayor Davis received the written consent of then-County Executive Astorino, he still has a very well, problematic well, it, role it would in be, all of this. It would be the County Executive's office and anybody close to them, Crystal Collins or whoever close to the County Exec, can you send and email me a copy of the agreement that Astorino approved Davis's plan yeah, so I could actually have it um, and, and I'll reach out. If, if this doesn't get to you, I'll reach out via phone to, uh, I'll actually speak to, I'll reach out to uh, Ken Jenkins and Crystal Collins tonight. Because the real problem here is no one seems to want to abide by the rules that have been passed to make sure that we have smooth, orderly government. Especially when there's disagreements. The city of Mount Vernon has approximately 70,000 residents. There's no way that all of the residents are going to have consensus about major policy positions. Right? Some people um, are track fans and they want to see a memorial field restored that's going to allow for um, professional level track competitions. I know plenty of people from, you know, my days at Ivan Swain and so many other people that I ran track with. Matter of fact, I ran on the Valdez Striders um, in the late 70s. There are other people who want to see a restoration of the field to its old glory days when the Mount Vernon Razorbacks were you know, we're such a prominent force during our childhood and teenage years. Um, there are others who want a tennis court. The only way that we're going to be able to hammer out an agreement that is acceptable to all people is if we have an open, transparent process that follows the rules. And once all of the relevant issues have been heard, that an agreement is struck and we abide by it. And peop the next administration doesn't decide to unilaterally tear it up because they don't like it. That is part of the democratic process. Respecting the process and agreeing to abide by the decisions of your fellow residents even when you don't agree with it. I wouldn't care personally, whatever my personal desire for the uh, memorial field, more important to to me than my personal vision is that it is a vision that is shared by all of the residents of the city of Mount Verdon and one be after approved that all of our agencies, all the public is going to get behind and say, now let's get this thing done um, as we agreed. To, to me, me than my, my personal, personal vision, vision. That's me. Go ahead. All right. I said it, it sounds so nice. We need to say it twice. <laughs> so, 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 so our first guest hasn't shown up. So we're going to open up the phone lines if anybody wants to speak about the situation at uh, Kayla Tennis, the um, city council, TRO, the mayor, um, and all that as far as more. We're opening up the 
Phone line 718-705-4959. 718-705-4959. Ask your question or make your comment brief. Um, we're not going to have back and forth, back and forth. We're going to let everybody make a comment if they want. Yeah, this there's is a couple time. of people that want to call in. Right, this is the time to call in, make your comment, say your piece, and be out or ask a question. Um, again, that's... Oh, we got the first one. Uh, people Before Politics Radio, um, please state your purpose for calling and your name. Hey, what's, what's up, up brother? Donnie, Donnie Moore. Purpose is the Kayla Center. Center. All right. Welcome, Donnie Moore. How you doing, sir? <coughs> what is your uh, question you or comment? Uh, comment or question. Comment is Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. okay. My, My first, first question, question is, is, there were crimes committed at the Kayla Center. Center. You have burglary, you have criminal issues, and you have another host of charges, such as conspiracy, with the Mayor Thomas admitting that he ordered this match. That is conspiracy. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. So my next question is, why hasn't the city council called the county PD or the state PD to form an investigation into the destruction of quote-unquote personal property. That's a good question for any member of the council who would like to call in and answer. Mm. <laughs> right, I mean... Okay. It's a great no, question. Thomas, hmm? he's, he's, he's using... Uh, I equate him to Hitler. Hitler. He, he has certainly been the city charter until time. He has violated the New York State, State Penal Law. law. This, this all started in January, January, this first month of office, with the destruction of the house in Park Avenue. <laughs> right now, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't go so far as to compare Mayor Thomas to Hitler, only because the real hallmark of of Hitler's regime is that he killed millions of people. However, I agree with your larger point. That is that Mayor Thomas has been conducting himself in a very authoritarian manner, disregarding the requirements of you know the democratic rule of law in our, our city and in that respect he should be held accountable i'm in f full agreement with you on that and it may be high time i think the reason why the mayor continues to um violate the city charter with such impunity is because no one has yet to pay um an appropriate penalty for this including those who continue to aid and abet the mayor in his illegal activities and Brother Donnie, I would agree with you. I, you know, all officers of the city pledge their allegiance to the city charter and the Constitution. Of we to, don't we, to we don't to yeah. protect the charter to protect the charter. Yeah. We're, 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 no one's pledging their allegiance to Richard Thomas or to Ernie Davis or Clinton Young or whoever else may um, replace them. Right. They they pledge their allegiance to. You know, the charter. the charter. Right. And if they don't, then that means that they have been delinquent in their duty. And unfortunately, maybe they need to be subject to the same laws that they um, purport to enforce. Aha. Uh -huh. um, welcome, real quick, um, all the people listening Wilfred Dennis, Lat George, Oscar Davis Jr., um, um, the Future Society, Judge Adrian Armstrong, um, Tony Dofat, legendary producer, um, Philip. Humphrey, um, <coughs> Uncle Frank, uh, Maureen Walker has just joined the conversation. Um, anybody else? Uh, Hector, Big Heck, Pratello, um, Brenda L. Crump. Um, who else? Who else? Who John else? Jones, John? Kenneth Chamberlain Jr. Oh, there you go. There you go. Anybody else? Name you see that I? Omi Medina. Elias Goodsight. Um, Atif K um, Khalil. Mm -hmm. Khalil. Um, Don 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 Moore, who's on the phone right now. Um, I think everybody. Oh, and Oscar Davis said <coughs> to Ed that Pretlow took his money back. So <laughs> I guess that five hundred million dollars might not be on the table. I guess he rescinded. Okay. It. I will have to look into that, but um, that's where the library uh, trustee uh, president Oscar Davis. And I, and I want to add a point because <coughs> Oscar's comment makes it that. Oh, and Floyd Myers. Shout out to Floyd Myers. When, Go ahead. When mayors unilaterally decide to abrogate a working agreement that we have with other municipalities, including the county, 
and then to decide to spend money that was given under very specific conditions in ways that it was never intended, what that means is that it makes it more difficult for the city to subsequently ask our governmental partners for their financial support. Why would a responsible county executive agree to allocate more money to the city of Mount Vernon to repair and renovate Memorial Field when the initial tranche of money that we were given was wasted and, and it can't seem to be accounted for. And again, that predates uh, George Latimer because Astorino's position was, first off, you got to show me where you spent the money we gave you already. And then what they wanted to do, the new plan, what they want to do was going to cost an additional $5 million on top of what was left. And Astorino's office was like, show us where you're getting that $5 million from. Before we even give, we're not going to give it to you, and you don't have the money to finish it. We're not going to throw more money on top of bad money. You know right. what I'm saying? And that and that predates George Latimer. That was Astorino's position when Mayor Ernie da when it was Mayor Ernie Davis. That was his position to the mayor, and they had Mayor Davis had to show where they would come up with um, an additional five million dollars to finish it. And even though <coughs> county deputy county execs Ken Jenkins told me five million. I remember initially it was one million that he he got. I don't know if the, if the other if it ended up being five million, but I thought it was only one million. Um, also, welcome Ed Raves, um, Javon Boxhill, who I keep I will keep saying needs to be our new uh, controller. Um, mm -hmm. uh, will Black Slick, um, Eric Khan, what's up, fam? Omi Medina, what's going on? Um, everybody, welcome to the show. We're taking calls right now dealing with Memorial Field, 718-705-4959. If you have a call or a comment, please make it brief. Um, call in, say your name, and tell us what you want to speak about as far as Memorial Field. Um, Donnie, did we answer all your questions? You got any more questions? You said we have a guest. Um, again, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just sitting, sitting by watching to see when the city council decides to do something about Memorial Field. Because I'm sitting here thinking, and, and the crime, crime that were committed, committed and became a tenant. Everyone's talking about it. No one's talking about crime. Now, now, let me ask you a question. As a former Mount Vernon police officer, um, you have better insight um, on the behavior of what you've seen and heard of the current Mount Vernon <laughs> Police Department. Um, how would you handle that if you were, say, the police commissioner now? Or what, what is, what's wrong with what's going on right now? Speak from somebody who was a member of the department. Okay, okay, first, first and foremost, if I was ordered to go down to the Kayla Tennyson at that time of the day, day first, first I would want to have seen documentation signed off by a judge. judge. That, that was not a conviction. conviction. That, that was a pure felony crime. crime. Mm. Exactly. So so, Donnie, let me ask you a question. Well, no, what, what else did you – go ahead. Was there more that you were going to say about crimes or, or – well, go ahead. <coughs> you have to understand something. I'm not going to say if any of the officers, officers – Committed crime. I can't tell you. Right. I did yeah. not like the conduct of a particular officer. Mm. Can you? Because in the court of law, and in the court of law, ignorance of, of, of a crime is not a criminal offense. Actually, so so if you and I'm going to let Bob ex I, I interrupt. It, I'm jumped ahead of Bob's question. Can a police officer, if I'm a police commissioner, and I mean. give you an order, and it is uh, unlawful. Because illegal is when you get caught and arrested, I guess. An uh, unlawful order, can you refuse? Refuse because it's actually a, a, a unlawful order. Yes, yes you, you can, can refuse an unlawful, unlawful order, and I did it in my career. Mm. And you, you have, have to understand that the commissioner, um, Harris, is in a very weird position. Yep. The, mayor is, his, the mayor is his boss. If, if he, he refuses the order, order, he can get it terminated. It's important to be terminated. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm -hmm. to protect his job, but everybody knows how it works. My integrity as a man comes first and foremost for a job. Okay? okay? I'm, I'm not, not going, going to infringe on someone's civil rights. rights. I'm, I'm not, not going, going to go in and commit intentional crimes against that, that person. person. I'll, I'll be like, like yo, take your job. job. My integrity as a man comes first and foremost. Okay. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Yeah. And Bob, you had a question. But crimes, mm -hmm. crimes were committed. Why hasn't that been addressed? So, so what is the next step for someone if is the police department assisting those who are breaking the crime? What is the next? What, what for a resident? What should he do 
other than I guess the CCRB, yeah. what, what Bob said, but before we even had a CCRB, what would have been the steps? The CCRB has no, has no jurisdiction on enforcing the, the, the laws of the, of the um, New York State Penal Law. You have to seek outside agency intervention, i.e. county PD. Me personally, I would go straight to the state police because it appears county PD were called down the killer center that night and nothing was done. Go so straight to the state police. I want to welcome Tamika Covendale, uh, attorney, and um, Eric Kahn who says it was illegal, you have to have court papers to evict someone, period. period. Right. I mean, it should be a concern of, of all Mount Vernon residents because Mayor Thomas has taken illegal steps to restrict people's access to their property on at least three occasions that we know of. Right. Freddy's, Mega Beverage, Beverage. and all this. Right. And it seems that um, the mayor has no compunction against, um, you know, trying to seize people's <coughs> property rights. And this is very troubling because there's nothing to to prevent him from doing the same thing to someone's house. Well, see, that, and that's what I was telling people with the Freddie situation. Even if you don't agree with Freddie, the person, you know what I'm saying? You still, all businesses should have got behind that because if they can take his business, what's to stop them from taking your business? So mm -hmm. it's like the dude who, who you know, he said they... I, I didn't jump in because it didn't affect me. And the next group said, I didn't jump in because it didn't affect me. Right. The next person said, I didn't jump in because it didn't affect me. And then when the last person got attacked, he looked around. There was nobody to have his back because he watched them all get taken out. If you watch it and you don't speak up, you could be next. And one thing that Bob Marone, I, I do Tuesdays on the Bob Marone show, Good Morning mm -hmm. Westchester on WVOX. Um, I do a little news segment. And one of the conversations we had when the name Spezio came up or possibly controlling the police department and stuff, he said that concerns him because whoever controls the police department controls the city. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, if you have the control of the police department, you control the city. You control things. You know, so um, a lot of people have been using the word a lawless city right now. Go ahead. AJ. Yes, sir. Isn't that, isn't that how... I, 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 it definitely appears that way. I mean, it definitely. Yeah. Okay. Donnie, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, yes sir. sir. Can you, because all of us kind of have some sort of insider knowledge, because we've been, you know, we supported the, 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 the Thomas campaign and were subsequently disillusioned by some initial steps, but... Not, I don't, I'm not sure all of our listeners are aware of some of the, you know, criminal activities that the, the mayor has, or some of the ways in which the mayor has used the police to advance his narrow partisan political agenda. Are there any other previous instances that our viewers may not be aware of that you think that they should, should know where the mayor has done something similar? Well, let's start off in January of the first, first, first year of office, mm -hmm. okay? You had conspiracy back then with Spezio, Figueroa, who was signing the company, the whole nine up. And keep in mind, we still have evidence on bid rigging in regards to which company was going to be awarded a contract to demolish that house. I have copies of that. Right. Okay? This all started his first month of his administration, and it has continued since he's been in office. But, but yet, yet, our city, city my word is city charter, and I told this some years ago, this city charter has to be revised. This was even before her, um, Richie became here. It is outdated. Mm. A lot of things are not applicable, and a lot of the city core elements have to be added to prevent, quote, unquote, this runaway mayor type mentality. The only way to get Richie out of office is to be convicted of a misdemeanor, at least a misdemeanor. You understand? Know I'm, I'm not familiar with, with uh, state gun laws, mm. only, the, the, only the governor can remove them. Yeah. Can remove him from office at this point in time. Now, now they, they want, want to invoke Article 26 of the Charter. I beseech the city council, council to contact Cuomo to invoke Article, Article, Article 26 for uh, the maximum 60 days. days. Which, it, which, would call, which would call for a suspension of the mayor for 60 days. And the controller. Correct. And the controller. The mayor and the controller. I don't, I don't know, know what they're going to have No, 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 but I'm saying it, 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 it states the mayor and the controller. I'm just saying it states both of those positions. Right. So we want, want to get the core negative element out, which is Richard Thomas' mayor. 
And whoever comes in is the intro man. They just start putting steps together to try to rectify the wrong that he has committed. And he has no say so. You know, ironically, what you're speaking on, um, Councilman Richard Thomas also uttered the same words about then Mayor Ernie Davis um, and, and tried to file an Article 78 to have him removed from office mm-hmm. and get him and, 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 and um, actually knock him off the ballot because he was, un, you know, um, because of his activities that he had done and, and, and was accused of but, and stuff. But, 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 but check this out. out. And when, at that time, time Councilman Richard Thomas, I told him, the way the charge is structured, you can't touch it, you do not commit that act as Ernie Davis mayor. It was the alleged act, and I know the story behind that, I don't fault Ernie. The alleged act he did as civilian Ernie Davis. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Right, 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 now, exactly. This latest incident, this latest incident at Keller Citizen Center, he committed that crime as his, Mayor Richard, Richard Thomas. He right. gave the order. That's, That's the, the conspiracy, the burglary, and then the criminal mischief. Felonies and misdemeanors up to good zoo. And and we can't say, and we don't have to use the word alleged because he had a press conference the next day. Can anyone go? Right. Go ahead, Lorraine. Can anyone go to the attorney general and have more charges pressed done? You, 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 you can give information to the attorney general. It's up to them to, to I guess, uh, do more charges the or whatever. Council, the city council, in conjunction with Taylor, can go to the district attorney in White Plains. Rick has already admitted, admitted the conspiracy factor. He admitted he gave the order. So you have the conspiracy on Mayor Thomas. Big Robinson, you have burglary because the way the New York statute is, is written, it's in the penal law, it's to enter, enter or remain unlawfully to commit a crime here in Follow the flow. So when they broke the lock into the tenement bubble, that's when you have the burglary. When they damaged the bubble, which was inside the structure, that's when you have the criminal mischief. Both of those charges are felonies. And you mm-hmm. have a video of someone, Figaro or associate, taking back to the electrical block. That, I don't know the dollar value, like, but that's another charge of criminal mischief. But again, that's something that the city owns. And the city would have to pursue that charge and that individual that damned the electrical box. Um, I have a comment from Dee Wilson. She's a former New York City uh, correction officer, and um, she speaks about a lot of that going on where she worked, and she says she will not abide by uh, an unlawful order and jeopardize her pension. Um, she said um, they just have to terminate her, and, and, it's, and then it's going down. Um, she said, but they also know who to... C- who to get to do their dirty work. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the people in charge, they know who to get. Like they know those that will ride or die with them or whatever and commit the dirty deeds. And they know something. You got to understand. Uh-huh. You got to understand something. Like, like you, you said, said earlier, whoever controls, controls the police department controls, controls the city. I will not, not say anything negative against, against the PD because that's, 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 that's my love. That's my love. But, but I, I don't, don't agree with, with actions of quite a few individuals, individuals here. That's, That's what, what I will say. say. And, and Brenda Crump, she put on here, refuse unlawful order equals you lose your job. Follow unlawful order. You keep your job and commit the criminal act. Then the integrity of that person comes into play. Are you going to put your integrity as a person, first and foremost, or secondary? That's the question only that individual can ask. Everybody would like to climb up that the ladder of success. But are you going to put your integrity as a man or woman behind the job? And or before the job? Well, one more I, time, I just want to say, everybody who would like to call in, I mean, a lot of people had so much to say, and I'm trying to give people an opportunity to get a few seconds on the air and, 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 and share their views or whatever. Uh, the number is 718-705-4959 if you want to talk about uh, Memorial Field Pro or Con, or whatever you feel, uh, if you have a question or a comment, um, give you time to you know do that briefly go ahead bob i do want to add that while i think brenda is absolutely right that most people experience this kind of pressure as um you know a series of bad choices either i follow an illegal order um and keep my job or i I refuse and 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 lose my job i don't know that those are the only alternatives actually um no one can be fired from a municipal job without following, you know, due process procedures, right? So there has to be a determination made by the 
appropriate person, appropriate office, that this per that um, a police officer was in fact um, engaged in some sort of illegal action that warrants that they be fired. Usually, a union is the agency that ensures that all municipal employees receive their due process. And in that sense, it, quite honestly, I think there is a pivotal role for the Mount Vernon Police Union to play here. Should people refuse to follow unlawful commands given to them either by the mayor or um, by a police commissioner? Now, I have to say that, and I just want to point out that, um, you know, the, 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 the first sin that the Thomas administration committed was when they appointed Joseph Spezio to either an informal or formal position within uh, the Mount Vernon Police Department. Joseph Spezio is in direct conflict of interest be precisely because the police department has a pivotal role to play in the approval of any kind of permits to haul trash in the city, which Joe currently has. So Joe should have never been in that position in the first place. My understanding is that Joe Spezio, the mayor, and several other of our commissioners have, you know, not filed proper paperwork or anything. But Joe doesn't need to be there. That's, that's a big problem, A. And B, just to follow up on Donnie's point, I do want to point out that this is not the first instance where the police have been dispatched to engage in an essentially an illegal political kind of operation. They did the same thing when various police officers were sent to New York State government agencies, including the Labor Department, yes. in order to investigate you know, um, allegations that the mayor had made with respect to Councilman Wallace's businesses kind of, you know, handling of the, the emergency operations center. I personally saw emails to this effect, and I can tell you that um, it is very, very disturbing, and it will Call create a hold. chilling yeah. atmosphere should the mayor continue to have police officers going investigating what is essentially a political dispute that he has with people. And I need, I want to point out to everyone, because there are men, many people who have been um, doubtful as to some of the claims that we've made about who's right and who's wrong in a lot of these legal disputes. The mayor suffered another defeat. Um, this past week, when he settled with Councilman Wallace's um, development firm for some two hundred and seventy thousand dollars, after telling everyone in the city of Mount Vernon for two or three years, and he was uh, robbing the yeah, city, he was robbing and, the city, and, and everything no else. What wages? happened? What happened? We got you. A, you wasted the city's money. We we got another caller. Caller, please state your name and your purpose for calling. Hello. Hello. Yes, AJ. Yes, you're on People Before Politics. Please state your name and your purpose for calling. Good evening. Peace and love. TD Coleman here. Hey, how are you, sir? Peace, brother. I'm well, sir. I'm well. What's Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. No doubt. What's but, your question but, or comment? My comment is, is, is obviously on, the, uh, on the, the the Thomas administration and how they have been engaging in this type of illegal activity for the past and the destruction of the Kayla Tennis Court. Um, this, this is a major issue, and, and this goes beyond Kayla. You know, this really speaks to every business in Mount Vernon because there's now a pattern where this mayor has shown his power unlawfully by not only shutting down OK Freddy's, but now we have Kayla. Mm -hmm. And make and, and make a and make a beverage. Um, mega beverage was shut down at all the same times. Okay, Freddie was shut down. Yes. So, so other businesses are not saying, well, "Wait a minute." So, so if I don't do what Richard Thomas tells me to do, if I don't adhere to what he says, he can come shut me down and destroy my property. Now, now this has become a threat. This is a threat to not only. You know, Kayla, well, it's actually to become a threat in action, but this is also a threat to the other businesses in the community. So um, this is a major issue, and I've always had reservations about Richie recently, but this issue really uh, hit hard for me because um, 
I grew up at the tennis court before it was Kayla. But we also, I got another comment regarding certain comments regarding Kayla being a race, you know, a racist issue. People were saying that it only catered to the white folks and that um, mostly because of outsiders, Calum, Michelle, my point, Jones, whatever, it really didn't cater to the Mount Vernon community, the African American community, and that's not true. I, that I was, I was, true. I just wanted to, in, I wanted to inter, interject. Um, I totally agree with you. Um, Cynthia Turnquest Jones, a former co-host of the show, she sh- did a video, and um, the, after the, the first day, a very emotional video, and she said um, several of the children that go to her, the youth from her church, um, go p- are playing tennis for free. Um, at Kayla Tennis, right. you know what I'm saying. So, and then I want Bob to recall to re, um, a comment you made yesterday. A lot of people are talking about what well, you got to pay to to play tennis, and you were talking about right. other organizations like the Razorback. I want you to right. repeat that again. Yeah, um, I was out there with AJ, and one of the things again that when we talked to people, it was pointed out that there is a large contingent of children of color who. Maybe smaller than, you know, many other sports activities who do enjoy tennis. So it's not true that um, children of color are not given an opportunity. Many of the white kids and their parents who play tennis down there are actually from Mount Vernon because we saw a lot of Mount Vernon residents yesterday. But I was I also made, you know, noted yesterday that when I played for the Razorbacks, the Razorbacks made use of Memorial Field as well when I was a kid and that. You have to pay a fee in order to be on the Razorback. So it's not free. The sporting activities that um, take place at the field, especially organized teams, very often do require that people pay some sort of fee. It also should be pointed out um, that Cynthia (coughs) introduced us to a director of a local camp here, an African-American woman. I don't remember who she was, but she told us that Keela allowed about 50 kids, mostly kids of color, from the city of Mount Vernon to play tennis for free (coughs) during the summers. So it's a little bit more complicated than that, and I think it's rather easy to try to dismiss the tennis court activities as kind of elitist by distorting the clientele that they serve. Yeah, they they might be more well-to-do folks. I don't play tennis personally, but I don't have an objection to people being afforded the opportunity to play tennis at affordable fees. I, I don't play tennis yeah. either. <laughs> and I and I took tennis in gym because that you don't, know when you say when, that, AJ. when you when you can select what 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 sport what you're going to do, I took tennis <laughs> in gym because that's where all the girls were. So I was in high school, so that's where I that's why I I wasn't really serious about tennis, but that's where all the mm-hmm. girls were and I went in there in high school and I took up tennis. <laughs> and of course I didn't learn much about tennis. And you <laughs> loved it ever since. But I love <laughs> but, 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 but I'm saying so but but um you know a a, a viewer um Yonka's voice did a video well they had their page called the Mount Vernon Yonka's voice whatever and um they were talking to a resident and they were asking the resident come on really who benefits the kids of of Mount Vernon they're gonna benefit more what from tennis or, or or from a track and the resident had a very good answer why when it comes to our children does it have to be tennis or track why can't it be both Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I don't know that's the, the, but it's on um, the Yonkers voice page, but um, in that video. But that was a very good answer because he was trying to get him to say more people will benefit more from track and Mount Vernon then will benefit from tennis. And he said, why can't we have both? You know what I'm saying? Why do we always have to limit our youth? You know, why can't our youth be exposed to other things? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, even though it might not be the popular sport, but why can't we? A, a, a elevate, you know. I mean, um, I see Marvin Church is is on, and shout to Leo Nelson too. Um, Marvin Church was talking about the Library Square project and introducing some, and one of the programs was introducing the youth to to fencing, and 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 being in, from from a, 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 a instructor who has led some youth to the to the actual Olympics. You know what I'm saying? So that you know, a, a, I don't know why are you for always. Exp- it's just football or basketball, or maybe baseball sometime. You know what I'm saying? Like, where other youth are exposed to chess and tennis and fencing and, 
you know, have more well round, you know, that builds them more rounded. You know what I'm saying? Being exposed to many different things. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I just wanted to point that out. So, you know, as far as that's concerned. You so, know, A God GMT keeps posting that it's nothing but talk and there's no solutions, but I just it seems to me that you guys are looking for a solution while you're talking. Isn't that the point? Well, 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 we're not the we're, the city council, the the elected officials, um, are the ones that uh, come up with the solutions and, and, and implement the solutions. We've given suggestions. Um, we've covered it as news in the paper and on the website, and we're having an open discussion right now. So everybody, you know, this is a, this is not the first one. This will not be the last one. We also held a, a town forum when Mayor Davis was was in um, when office, you know, to make all the elected officials give the residents some answers, some answers. So we do go for the answers and the solutions. Right now, we're having an open dialogue right now to to, to bring more light to the situation. So, Very good. Um, and and I appreciate um, I appreciate his comment. We imp, we. Imp, we um, encourage all comments, whether you agree with us or not. We encourage all comments and comment. I mean, and f feedback. Um, I was also told I read the phone number way too fast. So for all of y'all that didn't hear it, it's seven one eight seven zero five four nine five nine. I posted them. Okay, cool. Um, uh, does the caller have any any uh, any last uh, comments or, or questions or something while you're on the line? Hello? I think you Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we thank my brother for calling. And again, we welcome everybody else for calling. Huh? Oh, that sounded like Donnie. Who just the Donnie, Donnie answered, but the Donnie other brother is. who came after oh, him. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. he's he still said, on? Atif. He Atif. said, he said, um, I think he left. And yes, I said, well, I'd like to thank the brother for calling. Yes. And again, mm -hmm. welcome everybody to call at 718-705-4959. We are discussing... The recent events, the recent events at Memorial Field and the, the Mount Vernon Tennis Center, uh, the, the City Council's TRO temporary restraining order to prevent the mayor from doing any further work, and um, I, we've also posted on Black Westchester the mayor's response and also the rally they just had yesterday outside the tennis center. I want to I want to add that. Um the allegation, the accusation, or suggestion that it's only white children who are beneficiaries of the, um, the tennis program is not only patently false, but the mayor himself, in my judgment, has deliberately tried to sort of stir up racial tension in the city in the message that he released on... Um, via email the other day where he makes that suggestion. Um, he tries to really confuse issues about who has access to the tennis courts, whether or not they should have been constructed in the first place, by essentially saying, why should the residents of Mount Vernon care about ensuring access to the tennis courts for people who he alleges are outsiders when people of Mount Vernon when we attempt to go to some of the public fields like Glover Field or in the adjoining cities, we're sort of shooed away. We're, we're, we're essentially profiled for, for being black people of color. Well, well, one of two things. Let's just keep it real. Mm -hmm. um, Mount Vernon could use all the business from outside, you know, people coming in and supporting our businesses as, po as possible. When you win, win an outsider from a neighboring city, um, and that's not necessarily will always happen, comes to your, let's just say, your tennis court, and they play tennis and stuff, there are various places to eat right outside of there on Sanford Boulevard. You know what I'm saying? There are various other things you can go, Target or something, Best Buy. Like, you know, some of those people may utilize some of the other business and support the other businesses since they're there. You, you understand what I'm saying? So the bringing in uh, outsiders is what, like White Plains doesn't, survive from White Plains residents, those malls are filled with people from throughout the county. Right. We all go to the, the malls in White Plains. So you know what I'm saying? To say we don't want outsiders coming in and supporting us, I think that's, that's you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what you want. You want to bring more revenue in to the city. You know what I'm saying? And that's just one business. And, you know, and I also want to say about um, Mayor Thomas, Councilman Richard Thomas, 
Now, I sat on a youth support, support, symposium with him, and we were talking about, um, and he was talking about the different things that we need for our youth. And he spoke highly of the tennis center at that point. And mm-hmm. he also spoke about soccer, you know, the kids not being, you know, having soccer and skate parks and other things to expose our kids to more things. Like that was part of his running platform, right. wow. providing more experiences for our youth that they don't necessarily get. So, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you were kind of ahead of it. Hello, uh, Patricia DeLuca. She used to be the editor one of the head editors I used to write for, for King Magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to her. Uh, she's on the check-in. Shout um, out. Yeah, so so um, anybody else, again, um, we do have a guest coming. I don't know if they're coming. They're not here yet. 718-705-4959. This is the People Before Politics radio show every Sunday, 6 to 8, on intermixradio.com, giving you real talk for the community. The subject for the day is Memorial Field, the latest actions at the Tennis Center, and everything that's been going on with the county. I mean, the county, the city council, and the mayor. And I, cool, I, go ahead. Yeah. I wanted to point out, and just to amplify um, a post that um, Brenda L. Crump right, um, made good, to the page, yeah. that some of our city officials um, on the council have become so frustrated by the mayor's um, sort of maverick behavior that th- th- prompted the city council president to... Um, issue a call from the governor to suspend the mayor. She said she will be calling, did she? So she, and I don't know if um, Councilwoman Lisa Copeland Copeland is, is Council listening. President, yes. Council President Lisa Copeland is listening, but um, if, if she is, I'm sure we, we welcome some clarification exactly. Uh, oh, actually, from anybody on the council yeah, right now council. who would like to come, call in and bring some clarification, speak on the TRO, yeah, the necessary of the TRO, yeah. why you did it, and what the next step is, because the mayor has incest, actually already violated the TRO the next day by entering the field and doing whatever he did for a very little time before the before the rally. So... Hey, yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, Being go, that I was notified the next day that that TRO was violated, what legal steps were taken against those individuals that violated the TRO? I, and that's what I would like the council to speak in clarity. I've actually talked to Andre Wallace after the getting, after obtaining the uh, the the, um, the TRO, and and I said this, and I'll say this very clearly. Um, I get tired of people on a national level being surprised every time Trump does something. When are we going to stop being surprised and, and then prepare for it? Um, Richard Thomas has um, violated court orders before when the courts ordered him to remove the chains from OK Freddy's and Mega Beverage and not put them back on. And then again in court saying, I don't want this to come up again in my court. And he then put the lock back on about four times more. Right. So... Why are we surprised anymore? And th- th- this is another point I want to make. And I think I said it on last week's show. A lot of people have said this to me and Damon, I think Bob too, that we're the reason that uh, Mayor Thomas got elected. And they also said, we told you he would do this. Mm-hmm. So this should not have catch, caught any of you <laughs> off guard mm-hmm. and in sense. You, sh- I, I, I would expect a little more preparation and being prepared for it, as opposed to, I, I can't believe he violated the TRO. I can't believe he didn't show up to the subpoenas. You told me, you, you keep telling me, you told me he was going to be like this. Mm-hmm. So why are not enough more? Why are we here two years later still, you know, trying to play catch up? I mean, all I, all I can say is, you know. I agree. My brother said actions speak louder than words. And that's for everybody. I'll issue a mea culpa. I'm I'm guilty. Um, I did take a leap of faith um, during the campaign season to support Mayor Thomas, then Councilman Thomas. And I have to say that he has deeply disappointed me, you know, how I thought he would conduct himself. I've said it before. I thought at least he had a commitment to good, honest government and... Every action that he's taken since he was inaugurated tells me just how wrong I was. Well, I mean, and, and I want to say as well, uh, one second, Donnie, and I want to say as well, when he approached me, 
mm. in like March of 2015 to do the social media for his campaign. And and several times during the campaign and in front of Bob a few times, I said, you understand if you get in there and don't do what you're supposed to do, I got to come after you harder than I'm coming after Davis because I helped you get in office. Like I was out of town and living in Atlanta through all of Davis's elections. Not to say I wouldn't have voted for him, but I'd never supported him or voted for him. Not saying I wouldn't, but I wasn't here. And I, and I held his feet to the fire. How much more would I hold the person that I put my name and reputation on the line and actually contributed to them being in office? I'm going to hold them to a higher standard. And I told him this several times during the campaign, and his answer was rightfully so. So for all those who like, oh, how can I turn on him and all this other, it's it's not about him. It's it's about the current issues and right and wrong. And if he does something that is wrong, it needs to be called out. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for anybody, anybody who follows him, any other elected officials throughout Westchester County. It's not just him, Mayor Spano, um, and, and anybody else that I help. You know, there's several people that the, the show has been very supportive of. And if they don't do their job, we're going to be on them as well. Police Absolutely. commissioners, we don't care who you are. You know, and, and that's, I just wanted to put that out there. Donnie, you had a comment. Uh, okay. okay. We, we all, a lot of us, I think back, back with Chip again because, because I, I felt, felt that there had to be a changing of the guard or something and an influx of new, new blood in my running government. government. Rich was, was very articulate. articulate. Don't, Don't get me wrong. wrong. He was articulate. But I, I saw the writing on the wall. Mm-hmm. in January of 2016, then when he attacked me on Facebook in March of 2016, because I'm a team player, you understand, you understand what I'm saying? We had, I call it now a dog and pony show, whereby he had just about all of his administration heads in this meeting along with myself in regards to the issue of the 2015 right. retirement of the Mount Vernon Police Department. We had a handshake, even though it's not in the course of court. We had a handshake on the deal to resolve the matter. Now, when I shake hands with a person on the deal, that's like signing your name in blood online in front of a notary. You understand what I'm saying? My word is bar. He backed out of the deal. Okay? He backed out of the deal. That's what his real true colors showed to me, and that's why I went after him. The problem with Mount Vernon and I saw, and I may be wrong, but they don't know what's going on in the city, and the only way you're going to find out is if you go to these city council meetings. Everybody, a large percentage of the people I've spoken to, mm-hmm. they don't even know what the question of Parkway Project is. Right, right. Why is right. that? Right, right. And and a lot of people didn't know the Lego building was going to look like that before it went up. And I don't, I don't, I really don't understand because there was a model of it in City Hall, like, and it was like, and 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 it was a big um, um, banner on the side of you know the wall showing you what it was going to look like before they even broke ground. So mm-hmm. I don't understand that. But I, I wonder, um, I'll piggyback off what Dottie Moore is talking about, and I caught a lot of flack when the, it 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 turned into a online on facebook major debate with you and the mayor late saturday night when i was playing space <laughs> and i was winning i was winning <laughs> I and, and i kept getting tagged my phone kept saying mayor richard thomas just tagged you uh donnie moore just tagged you <laughs> i'm like what the hell is going on and i called for i caught a lot of flag i called for the two of y'all to meet the next week and even if i had to sit in as an impartial party in the meeting, and y'all did have the meeting. I don't know if anything came from it, but you know, I did call for the meeting to try to, to try to further peace. And at that time, I was still, I still had his ear a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That was before he backed all the way off. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was able to stop. And I told the mayor then, personally, I never want to see my mayor. Yes, I voted for him. I don't want to see my mayor arguing with anybody. One, two in the morning on a Saturday or any day on Facebook. That is so unmayorial. You know what I'm saying? And absolutely, I put, I put an end to it, and I challenged both of them to a, a, a meeting, and they had the meeting, and I don't think anything came from it. But I, I did get them to the table, though. You know what right. I'm saying? I caught a lot of flack but, 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 for, for. I caught so much flack for it, though. Right. I remember. But AJ, AJ, yes. AJ, you, AJ, you, you, you tried, tried to play, play quote unquote. The peacemaker. I respect all of that. That happened at 
be honest, honest with you, if Saturday, Saturday night, night going into a Sunday morning, morning right, right, park, right. You know, after midnight, you? right. He Two. called for a meeting 48 hours, less than 48 hours later. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? Right. I mm-hmm. have no problem. But, but when you break a handshake deal with me, it, it becomes personal goes outside, outside of the realm of business. You understand what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, right, absolutely. absolutely. No, we understand. And the only reason I brought that up because so, everybody thinks I'm just so like I just beat up the mayor. Just like I wake up in the morning and my old my whole goal is just to beat up the mayor for no apparent reason. I get accused. I had conversations this weekend that I'd never write anything good about the city. And for anybody listening right now, that means you do not go to Black Westchester or read the paper regularly or go to the website regularly. You only go and click on it when there's a link on the site that somebody shared for you. And it's a story that's negative because there are plenty of positive stories, not only about Mount Vernon, but about the entire county. You know what I'm saying? You know, so um, I challenge anybody, you know, um, who well, says that. Well, there was a brother, Agard, who stated that solutions. First and foremost, if you are a surgeon, you have to remove the cancer and the surrounding area. Oh, nice. And in this scenario, and in this scenario, Richie and his whole corrupt administration has to be removed. Mm-hmm. You, you then have, have to have a, 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 a if you, well, well now I'm not going to take it because I know it's going to make it There has to be a special election. election. At, At least that incoming mayor, mayor will know the problem with Mount Vernon, know that he can't do anything shady, and, and that's, that's when the road will become for Mount Vernon will commence. I, I have to say, and I also, I just have to say, playing devils, whatever, being fair, so... The mayor has only, he has not been convicted of anything yet. In this country, you are innocent till proven guilty, but he has been arrested, arraigned, and indicted. But he has not been convicted yet. And it's not, and it's not guilty until he gets convicted. (laughs) And everybody has that right. And I'm going to stand for that, you know, just people's rights. Now, when in time a jury or a judge does, in fact, make a conviction, then he will be a convicted criminal. Well, and, I, and, and, I, and as a former officer, I respect what you just stated. But with the evidence that I have, it is nothing in comparison to what the AG has. Even his, his re- most recent admission that he ordered the destruction of the Kayla Center. You admitted it to the conspiracy. Well, let's let's put it in context. So, how many mobsters and gangsters, you know, on a, on a mob, you know, organized crime that we know are guilty that they they they, they get away with because they haven't been convicted. You know what I'm saying? So knowing it until they convicted, it's still, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty. That's all I'm saying. But okay. that's and, and I'm not you're banging that no more than that. And that's just for the other side. This is not a all beat him up. <laughs> and again, let well, me just not. say, let me just say for anybody on the other side, you have to stop calling Ernie Davis a convicted felon because he was not convicted of a felony, and that is the wrong term. So I just want to, you know, I'm just being fair for everybody. So. Cause I, cause it, well, I heard yesterday, I, I, Ernie, but well, well, Ernie's a convicted felon. I heard that at the rally yesterday. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not a convicted felon. Right. He, was, he was convicted and pled guilty to two misdemeanors, but he is not a convicted felon. So go ahead. Okay, okay. I, will I will say this. this. I will say this. With, With the evidence that I have, okay, okay. misdemeanors, felonies, and Bob, according to the city charges, the fact that they may be. He can plead guilty to a misdemeanor, found guilty, he is gone. Right. Oh, no, we're not, we're not debating that part. There's nobody debating that part. It's just the innocent to proven guilty. Because you said you know he's getting convicted. Uh, anything can happen in the court. I mean, it looks that way, but anything can happen. Hey, how many people knew Ernie Davis was going to jail and was going to have to step down from mayor? How many people ran that, you know, they, they, they were rallying about it. They were talking about who's taking over next. And, I mean, they were making plans for, you know, they, you know, we're quick to throw dirt on someone's p- political coffin. You know what I'm saying? You know, and quick to rush to judgment. Yo, and the other thing in fairness, for, for, like, let's forget guilt and innocent. He almost got the charges dropped. Let's never forget that. If he, if the grand jury doesn't indict him two days later, and it goes to that next judge. That judge said if it was in front of him, he would have ruled that the attorney general did not have authority. And if he did, those charges would have been dropped. So he could have won on the technicality. So let's not forget that. I'm not saying that doesn't. That's not innocent or guilt. That's not innocent or guilt. That's not innocent or guilt. But how many people have good lawyers and get them off that we know they're guilty? AJ, check this out. Somebody said Bill Clinton. I don't know what that was about. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. AJ. Uh -huh. AJ. All they had to do was file with the county DA. They have the jurisdiction, so that was just a, 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 a delay tactic. All that was. Oh, oh, well, ob really obviously. It, it, obviously. I mean, the, the plan... The plan, I mean, his legal team is doing their job to delay this as long as possible. I mean, you know, then he has an election next year. And if you keep getting this thing pushed back and pushed back, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he's still not guilty while he's campaigning. You know what I'm saying? So they're trying to get the, this might not see the inside of a court. This case might not start before the summer's over. It was supposed to start May 1st. It got pushed back to June 1st. Then the other judgment got pushed it back to July something. It may get pushed back again to August, September, or might not get heard till 2019. Well, let me ask you this, then. This is the, the question I have now, from the knowledge that I have of this case and everything. Don't think, being that Richie called out the governor of New York State, don't think that this matter, as we refer to the IRS commission, that's going to come in with the Donkey Kong side penis. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, can I stop you real quick? I see that... I've called for any council person who would like to call in and shed any light. I see that um, Councilman Andre Wallace may be t have tuned in. If he is um, and would like to call in and shed some light on all that has gone on and why the city council made the move that they made, uh, ask him to call 718-705-4959. Um, but go ahead, Don. I just wanted to – I'm trying to get more voices involved in this conversation. This – Allegedly, he was offered two plea deals, which he kicked back. Okay, that's now, what that's what I've been told too. Um, I know. Well, 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 why don't you just say in full what the plea deal was, Donnie? I don't recall. Mm -hmm. you no, know, exact essential elements of the plea deals. Mm -hmm. It was a Christmas gift. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I, mean? I, I heard. So I heard. Back, I heard. And I only. This is only what I heard. That it was five years probation. And he must step down from office, and that was the the first one. I don't know what a second one was, mm -hmm. but then I heard if there was anything after that, it would include jail time since he turned down the five year probation, which you know. So that's what I've been informed. I don't have concrete proof in writing or anything. And addressing Brenda, we didn't say that Black Westchester got um, um, uh, Mayor Thomas elected. We were we contributed. Uh, to him being elected. Uh, several people, um, Leslie Zamora and that whole team, Greg Bonaparte, um, several people supported him. Several people supported from a lot of different fronts. Um, Speezy of us evidently supported on a whole other another level. So no, Black West just alone did not get um, Mayor Thomas elected. And even though we get blamed for it, um, we did not. We contributed. And that's all that I said. And I wanted to be clear because that comment came up. I, I um, also while, while I'm asking everybody coming, to call the, the the 718 number. Please don't call the 914 number. Call the 718-705-4959 number. Go ahead. In in addition to um, Councilman Wallace having joined us, I want to also give a shout out to my man John Jones who joined us recently, and also Anthony Old School Mitchell. Any other people signing recently that we want to? We shout we, out we, we have we have another. Black George. Yes yes, Black George. We have another caller. Um. Caller, please state your name and your purpose for calling. This is Councilman Wallace. How are you guys? Hello. Very good, Councilman. How, how are you? Um, we, a lot of a lot of was said. We've been covering the uh, Memorial Field situation, the TRO, everything that took place, and a lot of people were asking, "What did the council do? Why did the council do it?" And I've been inviting anybody on the council to call, and I saw your name. So. Um, what can you speak? Too. I was just, I, I was just, just taking, taking a quick peek at Facebook, Facebook to see how the show, show was going. Oh. And, uh, and, you know, you, 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 you invited me to call? So, so, like, first off, let's just fill the people in. Why did the council, because a lot of people are asking that on both sides, why did the council make the move of filing for a temporary restraining order? What does that include? And, 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 and speak to that a little bit. Well, basically, we filed this actual uh, suit because um, we had sat down with the county. Everyone sat at this meeting. You know, we had council members up there. The mayor was there. The controller was there. Uh, county legislator was there. Uh, county executive was there. Deputy executive, county executive was there. Uh, um, you know, uh, Pretlow was there. Our assemblyman. Everybody sat down and agreed. Uh, 
that the county would help work to move Memorial Field forward because it's been a political uh, issue for 10 years, not getting done. And um, everybody sat down together. And we were supposed to have a second meeting. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, the mayor decides he's going to go solo and do what he wants to do. But, but, but what bothers me the most Mm -hmm. is that he hires people with no bidding process or anything else, and he's forcing these people to do this work, just move forward without any legislation in place. And what's going to happen is all of these people that he has doing these things, and they're going to sue us to get their money to get paid. And we don't have any clue of what, what the taxpayers are going to be on the line for. And, and we're, we're not asking the mayor and everybody else at Elmo Memorial Field, Field to stop, you know, put it in a full hall. We're, we're just, just looking for a pause because we recently all agreed on the council to actually allow the county to come in and work on Memorial Field because they do these things and they have the resources and they'll do it quickly and turn it right back over to the people. So nobody wants... Memorial Field done more than the council, believe me. Um, but we have to do it right. We have to pay it. We have to uh, actually protect the taxpayers' dollars because all of these lawsuits that are going to hit with us and the destruction of that bubble, which is close to a million dollars, um, the citizens are going to be on the line for it. And I'm a taxpayer, you know, and I don't want to see, um, you know, the taxpayers having to flip the bill for this. You know, I do everything I possibly can to lessen the burden on the taxpayers. Even with my lawsuit, as you see, uh, I would do extra money, and I refuse to take it because, I, you know, it is taxpayers' money being squandered, and I just couldn't do it. Let me, let me, so let me, we let have to all sit down and, and, and really, you know, do this right. Uh, lessen the burden on the taxpayers, get it done, and move forward so that, that our children can have memorial feedback. Let, let me ask you, um, there's two questions, but one of the most, the biggest question has been, so it's been told to many, and some people said they saw it, that the mayor went and violated the TRO the next day, Saturday morning. Um, the question is, what is the council doing about it? What is the next step? Is that true? Um, and is it true that he violated, the, uh, that he actually went to the field and violated it the day after? Well, well the day after there was some people working from, from Capitol that actually, actually one, one gentleman, gentleman I believe, was working out there from Capitol, I got a call, um, so did and, I. uh, I was, I was able, able, yeah, I was, I was able, able to call Councilman Griffith, Griffith because, because I was out of town. Um, pretty much, and he was able to go down there with a restraining order, hand it over, and uh, we discussed it, and he went over there, and he took care of it. So, uh, everything has been on, on, on a halt right now, and uh, I'm sure that the mayor is going to want to go back to the court about this, but it's okay. Still in all, right is right, you know, and he needs to slow his roll and allow the county, who have all the resources, to sit down with us, work together, and we can get Memorial Field done. And I really don't understand what he's talking about when he says he's going to have Memorial Field up and running by the summertime. Well, it's June. We're already getting into the summer. Right, right. Um, it is impossible, you know, for him to do that. And, and basically, this is nothing but smoke screen and mirrors to change the narrative off of his arrest and his problems. But you cannot continue to... Um, you know, know try, try to, to cover this, this up and, and use the taxpayers to do it because uh, all of this smoke screen is just hurting the taxpayers. Absolutely. First, uh, two things. One, let me say congratulations for um, your company winning its uh, case to get paid and and the settlement and 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 selling for close to a hundred thousand dollars less than what you're owed with interest and all of that. Secondly, since we talk about Marcus, you said you called Marcus. He posted at 10 a.m. yesterday, um, had to stop destruction operations this morning at Memorial Field. Why won't the mayor obey the law in capital letters? Capital construction now has the temporary restraining orders. I served them personally. So that was, I guess, the activity. Um, 
because I got the call around nine something. We all got calls. Um, Joe Parisi, all of us got calls that that something was happening. We all we all got calls, but most of us, by the time we got there or sent somebody there, um, it was over. So um, that's so. Uh, the, the next uh, uh, one other person asked, "What do you mean?" The question was, "What do you mean by looking for a pause?" Can you, I guess, elaborate on that? That was the question for you. When, when I, I say, say pause, this, this is, is not going, going to be a long restraining order to halt everything. The, the pause is a moment. We need to sit back. We need to assess everything that's going on. We need to look at the bills. We need to sit down with the county, okay, and allow the work to be done properly. You know, I'm in construction, and our rule is, and I tell all my guys the same rule. We measure twice before we cut because we can't afford to waste. Period. And this is going to give us time to sit down with the county, sit down with everybody, measure it twice before we spend somebody money. And this is, this is my money, this is your money, this is all of us who pay taxes. We, as the highest tax you know, uh, city in, in all of Westchester in America, pretty much, you know, we can't afford to waste not even a nickel. Uh, absolutely. Not even nickel. Um, Lorraine so has. The bottom line is. We definitely have to focus on every single dollar being spent and make sure it's accounted for and it's spent. And I expect to get, when I send the dollar amount of Vernon taxpayers' money, I expect to get a dollar fifty worth of merchandise for it. That's Absolutely. How I look at it. Um, Lorraine has a comment or a question. Lorraine? Hi, Councilman. I was wondering, did the letter ever get sent to the governor's office asking for his suspension for 60 days? Um, I, I am not sure of that. I can't comment on that at this moment, uh, but it's something that we need to discuss. Okay. Okay. Um, Donnie Moore, I, ex I okay, I was about to read it. Go ahead. Andre, good afternoon, good evening, good evening. congratulations on winning your case for your company. Has the, uh, thank the, you. City, has the city council assisted Taylor in initiating, uh, uh, by, uh, laws that were violated at the Kennedy Center? Well, those things regarding the laws of them going in the middle of the